Well, welcome back to the podcast. We're so glad that you could be with us today, wherever you are, wherever you're listening, whether you're driving your car, walking your dog, taking a run down at the gym, lying in your bed, or wherever you are. We put this podcast together to help you grow in wisdom and grace so that you can live an elevated life. Recently, I've been teaching about the difference between getting to higher levels, either by walking up the stairs or by taking the elevator. And, you know, stairs, they take time. They take effort. Sometimes if the building's really high, you might might even quit on the way. The glory of the elevator, of course, is that you literally step in and you rest. The power of the elevator itself will take you high. And that's a real picture of God's grace as you rest in the finished work of Christ. Indeed, he lifts you up. And so these podcasts aren't so much to share natural wisdom, but more to share spiritual wisdom so that you can get to the high places of life, which Christ has already purchased for you. And uh, so you can go the world's way or the natural way to get to the higher places, or you literally rest in the, the work of Christ and allow him to do things well beyond your own capacity. And you can receive favor that's unmerited. So I'm going to be always showing you natural wisdom, but also elevate or higher wisdom so that you can not just hear about how God has high places for each one of us and abundant life for us, but to literally experience that in your everyday life. And today I want to be sharing with you on this theme of how all things work together for your good. So all things, whether good or bad, in the end, they're going to work out for your good. And this I know is going to be really inspiring for you. So tune in after the music. I'll be back. I know you're going to be really built up and encouraged. Today, I'm going to be sharing about how all things will work together for your good. You know, it must be very unpleasant to know that people are planning and plotting to do evil against you. But this is what happened to Joseph in his life. But even so, as you'll see in this story, we have a promise from God that no matter what happens to us, God will turn it for good. You see, Joseph's brothers plotted evil against him when he was a young teenager. If you remember the story, they became jealous of him because he was his father's favorite son. You know, years later, after he'd been promoted to being the prime minister of Egypt at the kind of apex of his life, Joseph met with his brothers again. And he said to them some extraordinary words. He said, you indeed have brought evil against me, but God made it for good. God made it for good. And I'm here today to tell you that no matter what evil has come against you, no matter the tragedy, no matter the circumstances, no matter the negativity, God will make it for your good. You see, for years, Joseph went through bad times, betrayals, disappointments. As a teenager, his brothers were jealous of him and threw him into a ditch. They were going to leave him there to die. But when they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites traveling by, they decided to sell him to them. Joseph never dreamed that he'd become a slave, working in a foreign country with no friends, no money, no nothing. He probably felt like God had totally forgotten about him. At one point, the wife of the man for whom he worked, Potiphar, she accused him falsely, lied about him. So Joseph was arrested for something that he didn't even do. You see, he had many reasons to live with bitterness, feeling like a victim, but he never did. Rather, he understood this tremendous spiritual principle that everything happens that happens in our lives serves God's plan for us, for our good. You see, not just the good stuff when he had a, like when he had a dream in which people were bowing down to him, not only when his father favored him and gave him that tunic of many colors, but even in the bad times, even in the unfair situations, Joseph realized that God would use it for his good. I'm saying the same thing for you today. You know, 13 years after all the disappointments, disloyalties, and betrayals, Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt, just as the dream had predicted. But what is interesting is that if any of those bad things had not have happened, if his brothers hadn't been jealous, if he hadn't been thrown into a ditch, if he hadn't been sold into slavery, if Potiphar's wife hadn't lied about him, if he hadn't been put in prison, then he would never have reached the throne. You see, each step was actually necessary 
all of those steps were instruments of God. Years later, when Joseph's brothers returned to Egypt in search of food during that time of great famine, Joseph was in charge of the food supply and he met with his brothers and he said to them, don't worry, I'm not going to harm you. The evil you intended against me, God has transformed it for good. Let's read what it says in the scripture here. He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. Isn't that wonderful? He, he puts no condemnation upon them. That's why he's such a picture of Christ. Even though they'd sold him as a slave, even though they betrayed him, even though they'd done such evil, Joseph forgives them. He doesn't condemn them. He says, don't be grieved or angry with yourselves. Don't beat yourselves up. It's like the New Testament says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But he goes on to say, don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? He realized that the hand of God was actually on them, on their negative decisions against Joseph. He realized that no matter whether people did good to him or evil to him, all these things would serve the purposes of God for his life. The next verse says, and Joseph continuing here, God sent me before you. Huh? So God used your decision to send me before you here into Egypt. Why? To preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. You see, God will use negative circumstances to send you out so that you can preserve a posterity, so that you can save lives. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? And he continues, now it was not you who sent me here, but God. Hallelujah. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his household and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Look at the end result. This is the good that came to Joseph through all those evil circumstances. He became a father to the most powerful man on earth. He became the Lord of the whole of that king's household. And more than that, he was a ruler throughout the land of Egypt. You see, Joseph's end was far greater than his beginning, but it was actually negative circumstances that took him there. So I'm here to tell you again, don't worry, okay? If good things happen or bad things happen, all of those things, all things God will use to bring you into the purposes of, of God for your life. He will take you perhaps from a small beginning to a great beginning. He will raise you up through all the circumstances in your life. See, God will use people and situations to move you towards his purpose for your life. So don't be encouraged. Uh, sometimes you need a kiss from a Judas to reach your destination. You need uh, people who try to throw you in a ditch, who try to discredit you, push you down, so that you can actually, in the end, reach the throne that God has for you, reach the apex of your own life. If the betrayal of Joseph's brothers would have prevented him from becoming prime minister, then God would never have allowed it to happen. See, people don't know God's purpose for you, but whatever they do cannot prevent the fulfillment of your destiny, God's purpose for your life. And this means that there is super abundant grace available to all of us, no matter the circumstances that we're going through. God will make everything work together for our good. So don't be discouraged. Uh, you can have high expectations about your future, no matter the situation you're in right now. Your Father in heaven guarantees you victory in every circumstance. Now we're going to read that classic scripture in Romans 8.28 that is so often cited by believers. Here, the Apostle Paul writes, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. And this first expression here, we know, I'm going to break this scripture down to you. The word here for know is a Greek word oida in the original. It means knowledge that doesn't just come through or doesn't come through studying or learning. It's not a mental understanding, an academic thing, but it's something we know by the revelation of the Spirit. It's a knowledge that comes from our interior. It's knowing in your knower. We know deep down within us because we know God in our spirit. We know what? That all things are going to work together 
for our good. And that's where the scripture says, uh, all things, not some things, not just good things, but all things. That's a hundred percent of what's happening to you right now. God is going to use those things for your good. Perhaps in the past you didn't appreciate that, but because you now appreciate it, now you have faith in what God is doing, even though you may not have appreciated it in the past, may not have had faith, maybe have complained or criticized, whatever, but now through this session, through this sermon, things are going to change and you're going to actually thank God even. When negative stuff happens, you're going to say, hallelujah, even though the hand of man did this to me, the hand of God is behind it and God is going to use it to lift me up. You see, Paul says that all things work together for for good, not just good and pleasant things, but even bad things work together for our good. It doesn't mean to say that all things uh, in our lives are initiated by God, uh, but that God will cause even those evil works to cooperate for our good. You see, that's what the word here, work together, means. It means to cooperate, literally, to operate together. God causes things to come together. He aligns things for us so that they produce good in our lives. God doesn't say that all things are good because obviously there are really bad things that happen and selling your brother into slavery is not a good thing. Doing evil, sinning, not treating people well, etc. is not good. Of course we're not saying that. But what he is saying, what Paul is saying, is that even if those evil things come your way, all of them will cooperate for our good. And so don't be discouraged if a door closes, okay? Once a man was, I heard this story, a man was traveling on a boat that was shipwrecked and he was the only one who survived. And so he ended up on a desert island, swam there, managed to survive. Uh, and there, trying to survive under the the tempestuous uh, storms that came that way and tropical storms, you know, the rain and the burning sun. He cried out to God and asked God to give him the grace to be able to build a hut for a shelter and protect him from the elements of nature. And so the Lord enabled him. (laughs) Wasn't a Robinson Crusoe. And so he built this hut and there he lived in a relative state of peace and protection, even though obviously it was his desire to get off that island and go home. And so one day he was just desperate and he prayed out and he cried out to God and he said, Lord, please send someone to rescue me. And the next morning when he was on the beach, it started to rain and then a huge storm came in and suddenly lightning struck. And you know where it struck? Exactly on his hut and it set it on fire. Ah, you can imagine the man Uh, But seeing his hut going up in smoke left him desolate, angry with God. Wow. Shaking his fists at heaven. But what happened was that, you know, he was thinking to himself, look, the the boat that I was traveling on sank. Now the hut that I built has been destroyed. He thought to himself, on such a big island, why did lightning have to fall on top of my hut? You see how it's so easy to get into self-pity lamentation, feel like a victim. So standing on the beach in anguish when he's watching his hut going up in, on, in fire, then he looked up and he saw that a ship was coming to him. And at last he thought, wow, I can be rescued. And cutting the story short after getting on the ship and talking to the captain, he said, how did you know that I was lost out here? And the captain replied, we didn't know, but from a distance we saw the smoke and we thought that it was the signal somebody asking for help. You see, sometimes for the purpose of God to be fulfilled, he has to burn your hut. Something negative has to happen in order to produce a greater positive. Remember, the fire actually is just a sign that something greater is coming your way. Hallelujah. So when that fire happens, when that storm comes, when your boat sinks, when the door closes, please remain positive. God's actually burning that bridge, sinking that boat, uh, destroying that thing. He's allowing that to happen. Why? Because he wants to take you into a new and better season of your life. The Lord is in control of all the circumstances of your life. Now, the biggest testimony is not to pass through uh, a test, but to have a test and experience a miracle in the midst of that test. You're following what I'm saying here. 
On the one hand, you could be delivered from a burning, fiery furnace like Daniel was, or you could go into that furnace, okay, as his three friends did, and once you're on the inside, actually, to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ, the fourth man in the burning, fiery furnace, and have that experience of the Lord delivering you right through the middle of that fire. You see, to be delivered from a test is one level of testimony, one level of, 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 of miracle. But so much greater is actually to go through a test with the Lord and allow him to protect you. You know, those three Hebrew boys, not one hair on their head was burned, nor did even their clothes smell of fire. Such was the blessing of God upon them. I heard a story about a wise man who was traveling with his apprentice in the countryside and came to a small farm that literally just had one cow. The farmer was poor, but he was grateful to God for the cow that he had. And the apprentice asked his master, the wise man, don't you think we should do something to bless this poor farmer? Yes, replied the, the wise man, go and push his cow off the cliff. You know, a couple of years later, that apprentice came back to the same farm and yet it had been completely transformed now. So the apprentice asked the farmer what had happened, and the farmer said, well, my cow died. We found them at the bottom of a cliff. So I decided I needed to do something else, and I started to plant, and I then reaped, and I planted and reaped again, and I began to prosper. You see, all you see around me now is because actually that cow died. Sometimes we too put too much value on our little cow. And sometimes the Lord needs to get rid of this mediocre thing in order to get the best to us in our lives. Don't complain if the cow dies. You see, the scripture actually says here, if you can go back, the scripture says that all things work together for good to those who love God. Hallelujah. You see, let's be honest. Who are the people who love God? Those who have been born again, right? They've experienced the love of God. Scripture says we love him because he loved us first. They know the love of God because they realize that whilst they were sinners, Christ died for them. Hallelujah. And that is true love. Hallelujah. Not just love in word, but love in action. So they've seen that Christ, through his love, laid down his life for us. And because of that, it conquered their hearts and now they love God in return. You see, anybody who's been born again loves God. Now, obviously, amongst believers, there are some who love God more and some who love God less. But the reality is, the bottom line is, all believers love God. And the scripture says, and down, therefore, that if you can go back, all things work together for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Those who are called. See, really, this scripture is talking about us, okay? Not some people in the past, but we are those who love God. We are those who are called according to his purpose. And when the scripture talks about being called here, this is not a calling like a call to be a pastor, a vocation, but called to salvation. Just as Jesus called Lazarus from the grave, uh, we are like Lazarus. The scripture says we're dead in our trespasses and sins, but God called us by name from the tomb of this world. Hallelujah. So you can know that by the Holy Spirit, Paul was talking to us, to our generation, to all those who believe. And we are called according to his purpose. And this points, as I said, to us. It's an exclusive promise to those who are children of God. Hallelujah. All things happen based upon that verse. Now let's go to the next verse and you'll see that it continues, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. So what the scripture here is saying that everything works together for us to be conformed into the image of his son. Hallelujah. The son of God, Jesus Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit's work here on earth is to transform us from glory to glory into the image of of Jesus Christ. Scripture doesn't say that all these things work together or cooperate 
uh, to make us richer or more prosperous or more popular, but actually they all work together so that we become more like Jesus. That's the principal thing. Hallelujah. That's the glory. In everything we're going through, God is using it to mold us, to make us, to give us the image of the Son of God. Hallelujah. And remember, if you have the image, then you'll have the influence. People want influence, but actually influence comes from being like Jesus. Hallelujah. God made the original man in his image and likeness, and that's why he had dominion over the earth. Once man had lost God's image and fallen, he no longer had dominion. And the same too today, as you are recreated in the image of God, as you're transformed by the Holy Spirit into the image of the Son of God, so too will your influence increase, your leadership capacity increase. Don't go after influence. No, go after the image by allowing all things to work in you so that you become like Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, we need to have something established in our hearts. Even if bad things happen to us, God is on our side. We're going to see the scripture says he's for us, not against us. If we don't understand what's going on, don't ask God why as if he was the problem. There's nothing wrong with asking why. Just be careful not to think that God is the cause of the problem. God is on your side. So beware of legalistic religious thinking like, Huh? What have, what have I done wrong? My car broke down. My child got sick. What did I do wrong? That type of thinking shows that you're living under the law. It's called legalism. Uh, dear friend, I want to clarify in your mind and confirm to you today, all your sins were forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is your father. He loves you very much. Hallelujah. And so there's a big difference between questioning God and putting your questions to God. Hope you can observe that. When we take our questions to him with a submissive heart, the Lord always answers us. But when we point our finger and question him uh, in an in a, um, obnoxious way, then actually you'll find that heaven is sealed to you. Romans 8 and 31, Paul continues in this verse and he says what shall we say to these things if god is for us who can be against us now the word who in greek is tis but the word tis can also be translated as what so not just who can be against us but what can be against us you see really what the scripture is saying is then if god is for us what can be against us if god is on our side then things like illness or financial problems or criticisms can do nothing against us. You know, in the movie Transformers, which is one of the sort of movies perhaps your teenage kids or young kids are going to like, the villain, villains in it are called De De Decepticons, and the good guys are called Transformers. And, uh, you know, Decepticons really comes from the same root word as disappointment. And disappointment prevents us, prevents us from being transformed. You see, many of the thorns in life come our way just as tests to see if we'll be disappointed with God or if we'll submit to his sovereign will. Again, Romans 8 goes on to say, What then shall we say to these things if God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, God is our justifier. God is for you. He's not against you. He's on your team. Imagine a team of football. The Lord is your goalkeeper that's invisible. He won't let the enemy win. Jesus is not on the other team. He's for us. Hallelujah. He's not fighting against you. He's fighting for you. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus is not just a supporter as well. He's not just a trainer, but he's a player, a striker. You've got to let him play for you. See, the devil will try and twist your mind to make you think that God is against you, that he's attacking you, that he's the one who brings sickness and tragedy. And so, no, 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 no. When these things happen, which they do in this fallen world, which they do because Satan is the God of this age, which they do because people make evil decisions, when these things happen, Jesus is your savior. Jesus is for you. Jesus will defend you. Jesus will take that fiery dart that was sent against you to kill you and he'll turn it around. 
around. He'll, he'll raise up a standard against the enemy. That's what the scripture says. When the enemy comes in a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. He's on your side. He's your protector, your deliverer. Hallelujah. He's your striker. Amen. So I once heard a very interesting a little boy uh, named Paul and his sister Cecilia went to visit their grandparents. And the boy had a slingshot and loved shooting stones. And he was shooting stones one morning uh, at some trees in the distance. And suddenly he saw his grandmother's pet duck. And then on an impulse, he shot a stone straight at the duck and knocked it dead. The boy panicked and tried desperately to hide the dead duck in the woodpile. However, when he was looking up, he saw that his sister Cecilia was watching everything from the farmhouse window. And after lunch that day, his grandmother said, Cecilia, let's watch, wash the dishes. And she replied, no, Grandma, Paul told me that he wanted to clean up the kitchen today. Didn't you, Paul? And then she whispered to her brother, remember the duck? So little Paul went to wash the dishes. And later, Grandpa asked if the children wanted to go fishing with him. But Grandma said, sorry, but I need Cecilia to help me make dinner. But Cecilia smiled and said, no, Paul really wants to learn how to cook. And she whispered again to her little brother. She said, remember the duck. And after several days of doing this, Cece doing all of Cecilia's tasks, finally Paul couldn't take it anymore. And so he confessed to his grandmother that he had killed her precious duck. And Grandma, she replied, I know that already, Paul, giving him a hug. Actually, I too was watching you from the window. I saw everything. Because I love you, I've already forgiven you. I just wanted to know how long you would let your sister, Cecilia, make you a slave. Oof, brother, sister, friend, don't let the devil keep you in guilt and bondage. Huh? Believe in the forgiveness of the blood of Jesus Christ and live in the freedom of a child of God. Hallelujah. God knows all your mistakes. He's already forgiven you. Amen. Uh, the blood is powerful. You don't have to be held back by thinking of your past and all the mistakes you've made. Confess your sins. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the righteous, is your advocate, your lawyer. You're free from guilt and condemnation. You see, God has a plan for your life. And in the end, all things are going to serve that plan. Everything will work together so that plan is fulfilled. We all have things that happen to us that we don't understand at times. Things that take longer than we, th we, thought, than we thought that they should and doors that have closed on us. Uh, maybe you studied a lot, but you didn't get the place in the university. You did the right thing, but you didn't get the promotion at work. And maybe that colleagues have even lied about you. Our tendency at times like these is to think that these things can derail us. But the truth is, nothing can stop us. Why? Because everything will work together to fulfill God's plan in us. Hallelujah. See, when good things happen, we know that we're moving forward. But actually, betrayals also serve God's plan for us. That door that closed, that contract that was not honored. Uh, if these things had not happened, you would not have reached the position you're in today. Hmm? There was something you wanted so badly, but you couldn't see at the moment that God had something better for you. He loves you too much to let you miss your purpose in life. You may not like it at the time. It's not pleasant, but actually all things are serving his plan. And when you understand that everything serves God's plan, you won't get frustrated when things seem unfair. You won't get upset when you don't get what you want because you now realize that it was the Lord who closed the door. It wasn't by chance that that person walked away on you. God allowed it to happen. You see, God's plan for you cannot be fulfilled without opposition, without delay, without closed doors. So don't be upset because all of this has the power to move you forward. Hallelujah. God wouldn't have allowed it if it didn't have a purpose. Nothing can happen to you now without his permission. Now just think with me here. Before Jesus could be crucified and rise from the dead, he had to be betrayed, slandered, rejected. If everyone had loved Jesus, if everyone had celebrated him, we wouldn't have salvation today. Part of the Father's plan for Jesus' life was to have opposition. It's no accident that Judas, one of the twelve disciples, chosen by the Lord Jesus himself, huh? this Judas decided to betray him. 
And I know that this is difficult to understand, but Judas ultimately was a pawn in the hands of God. He was serving the fulfillment of God's plan for the Lord Jesus Christ, his son. Again, I know it's not pleasant. I know when negative things happen, it can be really, really tough. But the Lord Jesus understood that without betrayal, he couldn't fulfill his purpose. When the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, they didn't know what he looked like. So Jesus, Judas said, I'll identify him by giving him a kiss. That kiss was a terrible act, a terrible thing to do. It marked the moment of betrayal, but at the same time, it marked a moment that helped to unlock God's purpose. Without betrayal, there would have been no salvation. And so remember this, my friend, as we wrap up here. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. He's prepared a way for us. And that's why everything cooperates for our good. God's plan cannot be thwarted in your life. So stop being upset because people have made you look bad. They have actually helped you to reach your destiny. Don't be discouraged by the door that closed. It wasn't by chance. The Lord is positioning you now for something greater. This is certainly one of the greatest promises in all the Word of God, that all things work together for good for those who love God. All things. Huh? They, all things may not be good. The disease isn't good. The loss isn't good. But the promise is good. Okay, The end result will be good. So it's a test. And I'm here to tell you today, stand firm in faith when these things happen. When you don't see improvement, keep believing and confessing that God is on the throne and God is on your side. Hallelujah. You see, the Lord is working behind the scenes and what he started in your life, he will finish in Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. Hallelujah. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that and it's been always a pleasure to share with you and to share these wonderful words of life. What a great privilege it is to serve the Lord. I tell you what, I never see it as a burden. I see it as a privilege. Thank God that he chose you. Thank God that he chose me to be mouthpieces of heavenly wisdom here on earth. So God bless you and we're looking forward to having you with us at the next podcast next week.